there, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Me First. It's me, your colleague in medicine and coach in life, Dr. Freaking Aaron Wiseman, and I am coming at you with my new three hot tips, I guess you could say, of eliminating Sunday dreads. That's right. Maybe yours don't happen on Sundays, but the day or a few days before you have to go into work, that deep impending doom, the dark cloud that swoops around you, the feeling in the pit of your stomach or in your chest when you're like, oh my God, I got to go back to work. Yep. That's what we're going to talk about today. How you can get through it, you can eliminate it and move forward in it. So let's do it. Let's get into this quick solo cast today so that you can be on your way to a better life, one that you love and work that you're excited to get up in the morning for. Here we go. All right. So Sunday dreads. Also, a bunch of millennials online call it the Sunday scaries. That seems, I don't know. I don't care for that term as much. I like Sunday dreads better, but essentially it's the feeling of doom that shows up like the evening before another work week starts or before you have to go and do a shift and it can make you feel miserable. It can like suck the fun out of the weekend or the time that you have left. It can cause a huge amount of anxiety that makes you like not able to sleep and you have stomach issues. You feel restless. You just feel irritable. Pretty much the ugh, the, they just feel yuck. I know in my own life, my husband would be able to notice when I started getting Sunday dreads. It would be about like mid-afternoon and he could just tell like my behavior shifted. And to me, it felt like this big dark storm cloud had just surfaced around me. And I was like, oh my God, I got to go back. I started to kind of feel a little panicky and it really killed any family time we had left on Sundays because I was already in the middle of the Sunday dread yuck. So if that's you, I just want to say like, hey, oh, you're not alone. Been there, done that, got the freaking marriage badge on it. And now I want to help you so that you can start your weeks off right, so that you don't have to walk around with years and years of Sunday dreads, and so that you can move into a life that you freaking love. So let's go with tip number one. I stole this from my good friend and fellow masterminder, Kelly Thompson. She was in episode 258. So if you want to hear more from her, she's phenomenal. She's a coach for corporate women in leadership. So she's an utter badass. Let's just be perfectly honest. And I heard her the other day talking about this. So I stole it. And I'm, going to st- I'm going to share it with you. And I'm calling it the ends, like the letter N, like a nest. And so she said, um, and it was on a different topic, but I want to use it in Sunday dreads. So it's a perfect framework to help when those submerge on top of you. So the first one is notice it. Second, name it. Three, normalize it. Four, neutralize it. So notice it. Notice that the dreads are coming on top of you. Two, name it. And sometimes for me, that's saying it out loud, telling Craig, hey, I'm getting that like Sunday dread feeling. Three, normalize it. Everyone feels like this sometimes. Everyone. It's not just you. So normalize it. And last, neutralize it. And neutralizing can feel like, oh, I need to like push it away and shove it in the closet. But that's not what I want you to do. Neutralize in and of the sense of like make it neutral. Instead of having such a huge, big reaction and emotion around it, just be like, yep, okay, it's here. Remember like when the nurses used to call us for an order of Tylenol and then they would write in the chart, MD aware? That's exactly what you're going to do with neutralize it. You're going to be like, okay, I noticed you Sunday dreads. I've named you. I've normalized that this happens to everybody. And now I'm just going to neutralize you and be like, okay, MD aware. Or if you're DO like me, DO aware. (laughs) And the other thing I want to put in this is it's really important while you're going through these steps of notice, name, normalize, neutralize, that if you're having to do it often over and over and over again to use the ends, you need to be super mindful of what you're consuming. Maybe you're scrolling Facebook and that's what's triggering and making the dreads come in huger and bigger waves. Maybe you're on Instagram. Maybe you're listening to a podcast or watching something on TV or Netflix that is feeding the Sunday dreads. And yet you're trying to use this in technique and it's not working. 
I'm going to bet that you're probably consuming something that's feeding it or something that's bringing up the dread. So in addition to doing the ends, which is the first step, make sure you're also being super mindful of what you're consuming on Sunday to see if that is bringing it into there. All right. Number two way to eliminate Sunday dreads is to use them as a signal. Just because you feel Sunday's dreads doesn't mean that there is impending doom and death coming. Even though that's how I felt that, oh my God, something horrible is going to happen. Know that the messy doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. Know that the uncomfortable doesn't mean that you're broken. Know that if you have Sunday dreads, it doesn't mean something awful and dreadful is happening. I think that's an important one. So use, use it as a signal. This is your signal now for change and change can happen a thousand different ways. My brain wants to go to, oh my God, in order to change this is death or dying. But now I know that about myself, that I go to the extremes. And instead, if I start getting Sunday dread, then I'm like, oh, okay, there that is again. This is signaling that something's going on under the surface. You know, where is this dread coming from? And you know, one of my favorite things to do whenever you have a big emotion is instead of trying to push it away, ask it, what are you trying to tell me? So actually sitting and using Sunday dreads as a signal to figure out what are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me like it's time to make a change in my work? Are you telling me there's time to make a change in my staff? Are you telling me it's time to make a change in my schedule? Really sit with that as a signal for change. All right. And number three way to eliminate Sunday dreads is going to be some DO magic. I haven't really went into too much osteopathic stuff, but I'm going to tell you it is magical. Not going to lie. I love being a DO. And so one of the things I want to bring up, and this is not medical advice whatsoever. This is just some DO magic knowledge that I want to sp- sprinkle to everyone. So if you already know this, I want to reinvigorate that part of your brain. If you've never heard any of this, I am so glad to be able to introduce it to you. But I want to get into some like neuroanatomy and cranial nerves. So cranial nerve number 10 is your vagus nerve. And if you remember right with vagus nerve, it is like the queen bee of the parasympathetic system. So remember sympathetic system, that's your flight, fight, or freeze. Parasympathetics is like your chill, homeostasis, awesome nervous system. So because the vagus nerve is in charge of those parasympathetics, those chill nervous system, we want to make sure that when the Sunday dreads hit, that that is actually activated, that your vagus nerve, your parasympathetics are activated, and hopefully to calm down your sympathetics, which are that fight or flight, your heart is racing, you feel like you need to run away type feeling. So going back to all that, your vagus nerve comes out of your jugular foramen on your skull cranium, okay? And with DO magic, with osteopathic manipulation, We know that if there are any dysfunction, somatic dysfunction, so any changes at the base of your neck or down and down your neck, that those can be treated and actually help with your vagus tone. Because what we've noticed is people who are stuck in like fight or flight, they have really high sympathetic tone and really poor vagal tone. So again, like we're trying to switch it over. So this is where my magic hat comes in. What I want you to do, I want you to get a pillow. I want you to get a foam roll. Hell, you can even get a magazine and roll it up or a book. I don't care. Something that's going to fit under the back of your head, but doesn't go all the way down to your shoulders. doesn't go all the way down to the back of your neck. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to place this under your skull. So your occiput. So that's like the bottom part of where your hairline is at the top, kind of where your neck and your head connect on your occiput. And that is where I want you to place this pillow, this foam roll, whatever. Place it there and then I want you just to lay back on it. Yeah, literally. I just want you to lay back on it and and sit there and relax into it. I mean, you can turn your head from like side to side and massage it. If you have somebody who can massage this area, that would be absolutely amazing. Even more amazing is if you had a DO in your life who could work on this. But essentially what we're trying to do here is do some relaxation techniques to that area so that your vagus nerve can kick in. Because just think of it like a kink in a power cord. So if you have an electrical cord and there's a kink in it, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. And so by relaxing this area, you're unkinking the cord and you're helping the vagus nerve be cool and relaxed. 
Now, if you're not into Dio magic, which granted, I know not everybody is, but this is an awesome exercise. Also, if you don't want to use a pillow or a foam roller, you can just take your hands and rub them up and down the back of your neck. Again, starting at your occiput. If you go a little bit further down, then that's your OA area. A little bit further is your AA. And then that's also where C2 of your neck is. So we're talking pretty high up. Get online and Google it if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Or maybe I'll put some pictures in the show notes. I'll take some pictures of myself doing this. So you can rub that area as well. I just think it feels really nice to just lay there and relax and do it. And then while you're doing it, do your ends as well. Notice it, name it, normalize it, neutralize it if you want to get two bangs for your buck. But I wanted to give you something tangible and actionable to do because it's great to do all this mindset work, but sometimes I need to do a little bit of doing. If you're not into the DO magic and increasing the tone of your parasympathetics by stimulating your vagus nerve, other ways that you can kick in your parasympathetics is to ground. So like literally thinking about the bottoms of your feet, grounding into the bottoms of your feet or going outside. Actually, we know that resetting our parasympathetics very much comes from just like the wind blowing on our face, listening to the birds, seeing a flower outside, sitting under the tree, noticing some of the colors, maybe putting your feet in the bare feet in the grass or into like a puddle of water. Nature is a natural balancer of our immune systems, and it really can help us do like a reset when we reset our computer or our cell phone when it crashes. A nature break is another great way to do that. So there you go. There's three great ways to help you eliminate Sunday dreads. The ends, using Sunday dreads as a signal, and then doing some Dio magic. I hope that this will make your Sunday dreads so much more easier and able to tolerate that you can see that this is not the worst thing that's happening to you, but actually it's showing you how to live the most amazing life that you can because it's going to spur you to change. If you want more great tips like this, you need to come over in the Slack group because I talk about all this fun stuff all the time. So check the show notes for that. It's Aaron Wiseman's Badass Collective. It's where we hang out because I hate Facebook. And it's where you're going to get more great tips, real life stuff with me, talk with other badasses in there and all around just have a good time. So come join me in the Slack group. All right. And the other thing is, don't forget your life, your calling, your pulse matters. See ya.